we are back. And this is, uh, Ugh. tested poor Lee's, uh, basically, like, looking at Solaris, and, uh, gonna talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, or what we look forward to, actually. Uh, Russ started the video right as I was, like, having a coughing and fit, so I'm still <laughs> fucking chest cold. Uh, uh, yes, that's what, we're, that's what we're gonna do, though. So, go ahead and start us off, dude. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, I've played a lot of Paradox games, and this one's very different because they've never done one that's not, like, historical, basically. Right. Um, and I like it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain about certain things, but, like, believe me, I like it, and it's really good. I think the... Um, just, I mean, just the things I like, like... The technology tree, I think, works really well. I was a little, like, hesitant about it when I first heard about it and was, like, listening to what they were going to do with it. Right. But it's really interesting because you have to make, really like, it's, it's in a way, it's more strategic in certain ways than just, like, a tech tree that's just a, a branching tree and you can see everything, right? Well, I'll I mean, Civ 5. Yeah. Like, you can, I mean, you can look up the tech tree, um, you know, like, on the wiki and see everything now. Um, but at the same time, you have to make choices like, you know, if I put this researcher here, it's going to give me more weight to get these certain texts. And if I... Right. Well, see, know. like... Okay, so I'm going to piggyback and then we'll move to the next um, point. Cool, cool. So regarding, like, the tech tree, right? And this goes to the whole game and even goes back to your first point of the setting is what I enjoyed about it is, like, I've never done any Paradox games like this at all. So with the new setting, it allowed entrance into this type of game for me. Like I found it interesting, the sci-fi setting, and it's what drew me to the world. I'm not a historical guy. Um, and then with the tech trees, that just allows, there's a lot of headspace in this game that allows the player to fill their own gaps in. So like you can research things that immediately benefit your empire, but it also gives you like lore and like role play ability you know like in your head you're thinking okay well we've done this i've researched genetics or whatever now i can do clone armies is that going to change my ethics and then you can actually go in and do all that stuff you know so it gives you a lot of leeway with the mechanics to give your role play and just allow you to like get a, really into it you know like you can get really deep in the role play with it and you get lost in your own lore and that's an amazing feat for for a game to allow you to do that, you know? Yeah, and I mean Paradox has been pretty good about that, even in the historical games. And so this, like just being almost a complete sandbox in certain ways, is awesome. Absolutely. And the other thing I really like is that uh, unlike a lot of space 4X games, um, you A can't just colonize everything right off the bat. Like, there's a lot of strategic choices to make about what you're going to colonize and where you're going to colonize. Right. And I really like that I can have an empire that's got multiple species in it, and there's, like, these, you know, Stone Age species that you can choose what to do with, and there's the ones right. you can uplift. And like, all of that stuff is really fun because whenever I play games like this, I like to be... I mean, I know I was warmongering there at the end of this game, but I played a game single player, and I basically was, like pacifist and didn't like ever declare war on anyone and ended up having a huge empire because I had alliances and vassals and like right like thing it, yeah it gave me the freedom to to pursue that and like I said I go to me that goes back to role play like you could be the pacifist that just makes agreements and gets people to like them and then you expand your empire that way that's a strength of the game in my opinion like you have it's like you said total sandbox you can play how you want to play yeah, and, like, you can see their design choices for that are smart because, like, if you play as a pacifist, it doesn't gimp your fleet in any way. Right. It gimps your, your armies, which are used for attacking, but so you're still capable of being a pacifist empire and winning wars as long as they're, like, defensive wars or an offensive war will take you just a little bit longer. Right. Which is awesome because, like, programming Shades of Grey is hard. Yeah, you know, it's, um, and I really like that, like, all of the, 
other empires, you can easily see like if they're gonna like you, if they're gonna be a good fit in your empire and right. in your alliance, and like, if you like, you know, like like these like guys, this like these guys up north, the fanatic guys. What are these? Yeah, like they're never going to like us ever. Like there's nothing we can do about it. We we can either just like box them in, we can wipe them out, but even if we establish an embassy and did everything we possibly could, they're always gonna have that negative a thousand. Right. And they're never going to like us, basically. Right. Which is which is, I, I like. Like I like that you. There's some people out there who are just like, Dick. and the the <laughs> yeah, the stagnant empires are a great idea. I think. Yep. I agree because it adds it adds a level of challenge. Like you can, if you want to try to take them down as early as possible, which might be a fun game. Would be like, hey, let's not do an expansion. Let's just try to build our fleets fast, and then first player to take out all the older uh, the older stagnant empires wins the game. You know, like your own win condition. That'd yeah. Be fun. I, my only like, I wish they were a little bit more proactive in a certain way. I'm not, like. Well, see, that's the thing too. Is like, nah. I, th I think we. Well, the updates. Updates are coming fast and furious. Like yeah. the, we've played this for what two weeks now, three weeks maybe. Uh, it's almost a month old, right? Almost a month old. So they had their first major patch, the Clark patch, just yesterday, I think. Um, and the next patch is already planned out, and it's more awesome updates. Like, they're very responsive, which is great. Yeah, no, they've always been pretty good at their patches. Well, so, like, with the with the Stagnant Empires, I, um, like, the guy to your south is a mil mil militant isolationist. And then on my pacifist game, I had one of them next to me. And what they're supposed to do is, like... They dedicate themselves to the defense of their borders, and colonizing systems that border them is likely to draw their ire. Right. So I was like, I had played for a long time, and I was pretty powerful. I was almost equal to them. And I started just, I mean, I was still like inferior to them. I colonized everything around them. I completely boxed them in, and my borders were actually pushing into their borders, and they didn't do anything about it. And I was like, right. you could probably beat my my fleet and forced me to give up some colonies and stuff if you wanted to but like they didn't they didn't do anything and i was a little disappointed because i was trying i was pushing them to do that i wanted to see what would happen right well that's funny because they did the opposite during this patch and it's not specific to the fallen empire uh, ai but they made the ai more friendly to allow access into their space and stuff and there's some really interesting ideas floating out there um the seller subreddit is where i frequently get my information even though i know going to the forums would be a better source of information but they're talking about like having neutral zones between um between empires which would be awesome yeah i think the devs have also talked about having you actually have to have trade routes and stuff and like trade fleets that you have to defend right so if you want if i want like me and you trading would be easy because we're just bordering each other and there's no like your capital and my capital are, are like literally a jump away from each other right the trading there would be easy but like if we wanted to trade you know someone else you actually gotta like send ships and stuff right. which is i i like i like like i was a little disappointed that they didn't have that in like trading you could trade i could trade with this guy the otaga republic across the galaxy and there would be no problem like yeah there's no there's nothing that makes it not happen basically like it just happens yeah yeah that would be fun because then that makes like the trade the trade empire a viable play style you know? Does that yeah. make sense? Because it gives them something to do as opposed to just, okay, well, I'll just build here and then whatever. And it gives a it gives an extra, like, sort of late game uh, frontier outpost benefit. Right. Because you can, you know. Um, so, like, from the new player perspective, like, brand new to the, to the genre, it's an amazing game. Like, it's very, it's not hand-holdy at all. But it gives all the information to you as you as you play, which is brilliant. I love. I didn't have to look up any wikis, which I if I sh if I did, I probably would have done better. But <laughs> I probably should have. But that's not the point. The point is, you know, I I played it, I experienced it, and I had fun doing it while I was learning it. And even like at the end of the hundred years, like I just figured out how to do genetic modification. I was like, oh, so that's how that fucking works. Like I could literally. I could start changing my population so that they could colonize a different world that I'd been researching. I didn't know that was a step you had to take. Cool. Now I do. 
yeah, so like if you wanted to play an empire that doesn't have any other species and no robots, like you you have to do that basically. Right. And I've heard if you do it, then like um, your 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 pure populations and your not pure populations, quote unquote, don't like each other as much anymore either. Right. So there's like all of the little things that make it hard for you to sort of manage, and things you have to keep worrying about, even though you you know. Right. Can well, can snowball and take a bunch of shit. I can see that like being able to uplift species, choose their traits, or you conquer a species and then you start genetically modifying them to be more conformist to your empire. That would behoove you and make the game a lot deeper. Because I found that like at my novice playing level, you know, I'd get to about early late game if that if that makes sense. And it got to where I was just like, well, this is kind of boring right now. There's really nothing going on. But I didn't know all the, all the little intricacies of manipulating my populations. So that's a good segue into some of my, like, not complaints, really, but just things I would like. Right. Um, so there is there there are some lulls. Like, early game is fun. You're exploring. You're doing anomalies, which are great. You're, you know, you're colonizing. Uh, Mid-game gets a little bit slowed down because there's, like, you're either building up to go to war or you're just sort of slowly colonizing the rush is over right but they've they've said like they're going to add they they're looking to add more mid-game events like things happening on your your colonies and things to keep it interesting and fresh as you play um so one of the big things here's here's like my big i mean so my my list of things i made a list let me read it do it um so I have a like mid game stuff and late game stuff needs more to do, but I wrote that before they even announced like what they were gonna do, so that's fine. Um, more everything is on my list, uh, <laughs> traits, tech, like you know, which they're gonna do, right? There's right. gonna be more everything, um, so that's not <laughs> really a problem. Um, I mean, more ship types, I'm sure they'll do as well. Here's here's the one thing I sort of miss. So um, almost every like every other paradox game has a shit ton of map modes right? where you can look at like you know if you're playing Hearts of Iron you can look at like the resource map mode, the weather map mode, the terrain map mode, the political map mode, the supply map mode I mean it does like Hearts of Iron 3 is almost impenetrable in a certain way but like there's a shit ton of information there and you can sort of cycle it how you want to see it so like um, I can't, what are you looking at right now? Just like let's look at your, your home section basically. Right so the one map mode you have is the details map mode, which turns off and on, um, like ranges of things and habitable uh, worlds and yeah, like all the good information basically. <laughs> yeah. And so like I always like that on, but the thing is, is like if I'm looking at Seoul, I don't need to know that it's making this many minerals, right? Right. Right. Like. I, I only need to know if I need to build a fucking station there to get the minerals. So, like, up here in the north, it's really good that I can see, like, Plov has eight energy and five minerals and blah, blah, blah that I haven't gotten yet. Right. Which is why I built a frontier outpost there, because I want that stuff, right? Right. But, like, I don't need to know that once I've already gotten it, because the only time I ever need to know that is if I'm switching up a sector and want to know, like, how many resources I'm giving away. Right. And in that case, like, that information can be built somewhere into, like, the, the sector management mode or something. Right. Right. And see, that's right now, that's something like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, right now, I'm on a, I'm on a roll. Don't stop me. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's just in my way. Because, like, I don't need to know that Kozum has six energy, and it's kind of covering up Rigel needs, I need to know that I need to build stuff there still, right? Right. So I want, like, the things I need to build to be the base thing and then like the what do these systems have to be like the extra information instead of like the other way around basically right it's, it's literally it's literally the other way around like if I hide the extra information <clears throat> it still shows me what I'm making but it doesn't show me where I can build so right. I would so, I would like that to be opposite basically map modes I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't know because new guy so the the other thing map mode uh, like the other thing um, on my list is I would like more transparency of how border ranges work. I know it's based on populations and stuff, but it's also so if you've got a planet 
and it's colonized, and then you build a frontier outpost like in the same system as that planet, it extends the borders out a little bit. So it seems to be like a how much border strength is in these borders, and then we like total it basically, right? Kind of system, which is that's that's fine. I'm fine with the mechanics the way it works. Um, like, but like when you're building a new frontier outpost, I would really like to see how much borders it's going to make for you. Just like an outline, like a line around it, to so you know, like, okay, right. if I build it here, it's not going to actually touch this sector, and I want that sector, so I need to build it over here, right. and blah, blah, blah. Or even a, a notification when, like, so I've, if you look at my empire, I've got a lot of border outposts, and some of them are kind of, like, in the corners or in the middle of my empire. Yep. I, w I would love to know when I can safely delete them and not lose any sectors. Yeah, I can see... Like, like, I don't mind not knowing whenever I place it exactly, because that's just part of exploring space, in my opinion. But, like, no, whenever, you're, you're, you're right. whenever I'm using, like, whenever I'm using a frontier outpost as a stopgap between two of my planets, I do, I would like a way to change that, because it's no longer a frontier outpost. Maybe allow me to build a space station in that freaking area or something, you know? Like, yeah. give me a different yeah. type of post that I can build that doesn't, that isn't as high quality. But that would still bridge that gap. Yeah, or like maybe at like at a certain point, it just starts to deconstruct itself automatically for you or something. Right. Because it's it's redundant at that point, and it's just wasting resources. And there's no real way to tell is it safe to delete it. I mean, sometimes yeah. it's very obvious, but a lot of the time, I'm like, I don't. I have like when I play single player, I save my game, delete it, and then like reload my game if it fucks something up because I don't know if it's gonna do it or not. Freaking cheese in those saves, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, no, no, no. I agree. I agree with that. I think that, the, like, uh, there's before we move to the next. There, I think that like the trade route thing might be one of the stop gaps that would be interesting. You turn those middle of the empire uh, frontier outposts into trade outposts, and then that brings in traffic, and you can add different buildings to that. Yeah, space like stations type thing. That would be cool. Whole new level, you know. You know, if it if it's a frontier, or even like I would love to see frontier outposts be able to do things like slowly colonize a planet nearby, like you know, like have more use basically, and like right. you know more more cost and stuff, of course, and you know more um, incentive to defend them very well and everything. Right. But like frontier outposts to me speaks to like dudes in space like slowly building up. You know, right? They've like got traffic from the mainlands and so on and so forth. Something cool. What else you got? Uh, let's see. So better map modes, border range, body, body, blah, blah, blah. Um, I know they just added in. A, they added in a warning. I know I was complaining about this earlier, but they they changed it this patch where, if, especially for like my democratic empire, if one of my scientists becomes the president it will tell me automatically like it'll give me a warning up top you know right. that but i would also like those things for um if you've got a science ship that doesn't have one which is less important but you know right, right. um i would like them for if you have a sector that doesn't have one cuz when we just started playing this game again i fucking just realized i had like two sectors that had no person on them because I hadn't like but no see, see, that's something like I don't see the benefit like I know that like my guy's fucking he's leader recruitment cost I, I got him because he was cheap but now he's not really doing shit in my freaking sector you know like Be, because dude you don't under, like um where is it where is it uh I'll have to do it on a planet the government, the, the person that's controlling the sector, for every rank of skill they have, adds like cheaper building costs, more happiness, oh, etc. Nice. So it's really important, especially like one of the things that I didn't have um, a governor on was the sector I just captured, right. which I really need one there because A, he's going to be re redoing stuff and re you know remaking tiles, and B, I need that happiness boost because they hate me, right? Right. So it's it's really important to have that. Um, also, I would like so I like that you can look at all the species and stuff up here, but it's really hard to tell where the species are. 
like a, a warning that says like, hey, you've got you can build a, a observation post in your borders, and you haven't done that yet, right? Because there's no like there's no indication on the map. You got to like go up to the context list, find the species, go into the sector they're in, and then see if it's in your borders, right? And instead of it just being like, hey, check it out, you can build this thing here, right? And you can ignore it if you want to, if you don't want to build it or whatever, but like. Right. A lot of my my complaints about like the UI and everything are just the ease of finding certain information. And trust me, having played other Paradox games, they've done an amazing job with like ninety five percent of it. It's really good. Um, but there's just a few things that I found as I've played that I w- I would like to be a little bit more um, transparent. I guess is the word. But see, that's the that's the thing. I think that overall, this is like a huge success. Like, I, as a guy who has absolutely no interest in games of this type, like, don't get me wrong, I, I do enjoy me some Civ Five right now and again, but this is like adult Civ Five. It's very... <laughs> this is what it is. It's it's not... It's as intense as you want to make it, and you can play it like I played it, which shittily, and still enjoy it, you know? Like, you're not just going to freaking get your face bashed in because you're an idiot. Because, you know, too hard. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's a success overall. I think that like oh oh no doubt like don't get me like yeah no I'm t- I totally agree. There's just like, like these are said, little minor things that I want. Absolutely. And so my list goes on, or do you want to? No you have a no list? no please 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 continue. I mean, it's not that much longer. <laughs> if if uh, by any chance any paradox devs ever watch this video, please. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. your games. <laughs> 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 Remove your tongue from from his asshole. <laughs> uh, Dogs do that. You're not a dog, are you, David? <laughs> bark, bark. <laughs> um, I would like so uh, along with the frontier outpost thing. I've never built a defense station in all my playthroughs except for once, just to see like how much it cost and how long it took. And I know, I know, like players have. I mean, I've read about people with strategies for them, and they're supposed to be like, um, they can be a really good early deterrent if you just build like the small ones. Like, let's see how much it actually costs. Build a military station. Yeah. So, like, my smallest defense platform. Oh wait, hang on. I have to. It wasn't. Uh... My smallest defense platform with all of its updated tech only cost 216 minerals and it does um, it only takes one energy. So it's pretty cheap. Well, that was patched. They make them they made them cheaper? Yep. Oh. Well, anyway, but they're also not that powerful. And so the only thing I see that they're good for is like trapping enemy ships until your fleet can get there, right? Right. Which is is fine, but also I like the idea of like really powerful space stations, like well, I th- be, being able to defend certain areas or you know block off certain areas where they have to like bring the full might of their fleet to it in order to stop it. And it, I understand it would be a big investment; it would cost money and upkeep and blah blah blah. But like, I usually just use my fleets for that purpose. I don't. I don't. Right. I haven't really right. felt the need to build any defense platforms, and if they're going to be there, I would like to, you know. Well, see, that's something that. like that goes hand in hand with um, the military fleet management that I think would be an awesome improvement. Like, I, I don't mind it how it is now, but like you said, if if we were, had the ability to put a, a defense station down somewhere, and then set a patrol, that would help me out, uh, like automated patrol. So you go, you spend three months at this system. And then three months at the next system, and then three months at the next system, and you could just automate the patrol so that you know, okay, my second uh, Pelagic excursion patrols the north sectors, my first Pelagic excursion p- patrols the south sectors. So that allows me to not have to worry about responding quickly to everything like that. Because, you know, like, I understand that there's some interplay between the types of, of space travel and the types of defenses. So like wormhole defense is different from hyperlane defense is different from warp defense, obviously. But having the ability to automate the patrols of my military forces adds an extra layer of like uh, strategy that I think would be fun to include. Right. And that plays right into the whole um, like defense station, you know? 
Because you could just put that on an aspect of patrol. I don't know. Yeah, no, like you patrol from this station to this station. You exactly. Know, you spend like a month there and a month there or whatever. Yeah, exactly. no. And so that another point I had was um, why aren't there any rally points? I don't understand because I know that the engine has it because there's been rally points in all the other Paradox games, including rally points you can set like the rally point is this fleet. You go to this fleet and you automatically merge with them. Right. I don't understand why that's not in, in here. And it's like I was really surprised to see that it wasn't there because it's just more micromanagement for me to like take all my new ships. And But I would really love to just have like when I'm building some ships to say like, hey, when you're done, you go to the first strike force, right? Right. Like just, just find them and merge with them immediately. Right. I like the ship customization. That makes that's a whole new level that is fun to play with. Yeah, I like it too. I like that it's it's simple, but also there's like I mean, as we've seen, they had to nerf like the evasion stuff because right. there's a million different little strategies. And I hope that they keep it. I would like all the ships to be viable, right? Like right, in well. my in in my head, the realistic fleet would be like. Like I had, you know, like a, a number of what did I have? Here's, uh, where's my, like, f you know, cruisers and then a, f a few more destroyers and then a few more corvettes and so on and so forth. So you right. don't just stack one thing against the other, because that's how sh fleets are supposed to work, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I agree, dude. I think that like adding, adding some more complexity to the to the ability to research, like. If I could spy on another empire to learn their tech, that would be cool, especially militarily. You know, espionage is something they're they're going to add eventually. They've said so. Um, That's going to be awesome. The one thing I will say about fleets, and this is one of my, I like, I don't. This is more like I don't know if it's more of a I don't know if I have an argument for it in terms of balance or as a, a mistake, but in my opinion, it takes way too long to upgrade a fleet. Like, like ridiculously too long to upgrade a fleet. That was... There's some information out there posted that they changed it somehow, or going to change it. I can't remember exactly. Like, I understand. Like, you know, you should have to, you know, dock your mothball a fleet for a while to upgrade it. Right. Absolutely fine, right? Like, no. And it should cost you some resources because you're paying for the new stuff and everything. Right. Like, right. I'm fine with that. I'm not saying you shouldn't have to do it. I'm just saying, like, we were when on our first game we were playing, or maybe it was on my single-player games... Um, by the time one of my fleets was upgraded, I had practically built another fleet. Right. Like in another dockyard. And I was like, why would I, why would well, I do see, this? That would be something that would be cool to integrate with the uh, defense platforms if they could upgrade. Yeah, or like, so I know there's some modules. Let's see. The, um, that changes repair speed. This changes, um, like the build speed modules. Right. I've also never really built very, very much because, like, if you're building a battleship, it's still going to take you fucking forever. Right. Um, so it would be it would be cool if like the certain ranks of your um, the dockyards, spaceports, right, like, increase the speed of like maybe both repair or if, even if there was just a module you had to build that was like this thing can upgrade way fucking faster or right. something because. Right, right. And you know, like, okay, this is like my upgrade station. I send my ships here, I get them upgraded, I move them back out, right? Right. Which is, brings me to my next thing. And I know they're working on it. And I know, like, they've done some good stuff so far. I have never seen sectors build a construction ship. And I think they're supposed to. I'm right. like. They haven't really said exactly what sectors are supposed to be doing, except obviously managing the planets. Um, and I know, like, Paradox is in this nice transition where they're trying to, like, do, figure out, especially with, like, Hearts of Iron 4, you can see, and I think it's going to be cool, and, like, with this as well, their philosophy has become, like, um, you don't want too much micromanagement, but you also don't want to automate everything, and you right. want to strike the nice balance between the two, and I think they've, they're on the right track, like, sectors are a great way to do that, because you still have to sort of worry about them. But your 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 management of things ceases to become so micro and moves to the macro level, which is really cool. 
right? Mm. As I get bigger, I stop worrying about every single little planet, and I start worrying about the big things, like the, the actual sectors, right? I'm the emperor of the United Earth Confederation or whatever. I don't worry about what the fuck is going on with <laughs> Sonor. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I, 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 think... I worry about what's going on in the entire sector, and I worry about who's leading the sector and what their taxes are and blah, 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 right? Right. I, li- I like that. But I also... I don't, I don't see any reason why a sector shouldn't be able to build its own construction ships and take care of its own resources in its own sector, right? Well, I think I, that, I, like... I don't really understand why it can't do that. There's, um... If you're going to err on the side of, like, too micromanagey or freaking too automated, you just got to make it a switch, you know? Like, allow me the option to micromanage should I choose to, as opposed to, like, just taking all that control away from me. Like, understand, like, I would love to be able to just set my sectors and be like, okay, go at it. But if it's not my play style, well, then give me the freedom to let them say, hey, do this, do this, do this, or whatever. No, like, I, I would like that too, because, like, you know... Obviously, when I make a new sector, I probably have some construction ships idle, and I can move in there really quickly and help them build up, right? Right. But at the same time, sometimes I make a sector, it's completely safe and out of the way, and I don't want to have to keep coming back to it because I'm busy with a war or something, right. and just telling my construction ships to keep building shit. Right. I want, like, I, I, I want to go to the sector and thing, give them a shit ton of resources, and let them handle it. Right. And I, and I think, and I could be wrong, I think they're supposed to. Because they build their own shipyards. I think they're supposed to build their own construction ships. It's just something is worth I saw in the patch notes it said there was a bug that they right. fixed. But I don't know if it's fixed yet for everyone. Um, like it might not have updated on this save game or whatever. But I think Sector should do that. I don't think they should colonize. I don't think they should build military stations. Right. Um, I don't think they should explore. Those are all things that you, you the player, should have to do, right? It would be cool if they petitioned for that stuff. Like, you get a notification, you're like, hey, Sector XYZ wants to fucking build a colony ship. Is this something we want the government to allow them to do? That that would be fine with me. You know, like, and you just say yeah. yes or no it, and then if you know it, then that increases their faction. Uh, that would be even you know, cooler. Like that because- would be very cool. That would if they if they continued because I like the idea of sectors as like these places that aren't in the core war worlds and start to drift away from you. Right. If like if they didn't if they didn't like you enough, they would be like, yeah, fuck you. We're just gonna colonize this thing, right? And like, right. This is start to start to take take over their own autonomy more and more. And so you've got to be like, no, stop right. it. Exactly. Or appease them and make them like your your empire. Like I think that's right. Good, I think that's a good idea. I mean, so the the basic thing is, I like sectors. I think the idea is great. I just want to see more done with them, basically. And right. I want them to be deeper and more involved. More involved in a certain way, less involved in other ways, right? I want to be more involved in their politics and what their, like, big things are. I don't want to build every single thing for them. You're, you're sound like, you sound like a woman. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want them better, but not better. I want them... <laughs> Are we involved in their life? I want them complex, but I want them easy. No, I think like <laughs> I think it's brilliant that like they they've created a system in which we've completely embraced and we want more out of. That's great. Like it's always awesome to get a system and be like, ooh, this is has so much potential and can be like it's a great system, but I want it even better. You know, like that's <laughs> that's that's huge. You did something right, you know. No, yeah, no. I mean, I think it's great. I just think more, more better. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, any other any other talking points concerning the I got, the core I got release? Two more things I, I could I could harp on about. Um, Go for it. One thing about the the defense platforms. My idea was to make them ships very slow very large ships because the other thing is that you can't upgrade defense platforms as far, as far as i know right and you can't ever move them which means like they become redundant right after a while right like after and the tech advances. it would be cool yeah it would be cool if like you know you could be like okay we're like pretend more guard over here on my right side was a defense platform i could say like i got dearth and germ germium and Madara, so we're gonna pull the Morgard guard back. We're gonna re like, right? We're gonna leapfrog our defense platforms or whatever, right? As we go, 
right? Right. I mean, I think that would be cool, and I don't think it would really break anything either. You just want um, you just want someone to say that's no star, that's no moon, <laughs> that's a space station. <laughs> also, it's a trap. <laughs> Uh, no, dude, I'm on board with that plan, actually. I think that would be absolutely brilliant. I think, like I said, I think there's some interplay between the defense stations and the freaking trade stations that could that could be made. And you could yeah. make them mirror images, whether it's freaking military that you want to expand or your trade systems that you want to expand, you know? And I, I, I like the tile, the planet tile thing. Like, it would be cool if we could get some of those tiles on the ships. That would be awesome. So the bigger ships have like two tiles, three tiles. Yeah. So what, like, um, and I don't want to like, you know, do too much comparison to other games, but right, like, right. Uh, uh, Galactic Empires, when you build a space station, you build a space station, and then you choose what modules go on it. So like, this is a mining station, this is a defense station, or you can right. like mix and mix and match them as well, and something like that would be cool. Especially you could be like, okay, this frontier outpost is now a defense outpost, right? We're going to, like, right. change some modules on it or whatever. Th uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's something the Galactic Empires does pretty well. Well, I think that, like, integrating... It, so you take the tile aspect of, of the planets, right? Put those on the ships with via modules, like you're talking about, right? Then that allows you to actually, like, do cross... You could, like, use Space Marines... And invade us, a uh, enemy space station, and then fight land to land, like on the planets. So, like your armies have more uses in space, even. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, um, the army system and the the war system, it works, but it's really simple right, right. now. And I would like to see some more like ships so big you gotta have like landing parties and and like. Marines that are used to like shooting over and landing on enemy ships and stuff, and that would awesome. be amazing. Awesome, <laughs> absolutely. And like and it would, give, it would give more of an incentive to actually. Cause like I don't keep a general around. I don't need a general unless I'm in war. And even then, sometimes I don't need a general because my you know I can just overwhelm them basically. Usually. Right. And so like, 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 but that would give you an incentive to actually like I need a general who's good who can you know I can keep around who can do this shit. Well, there's a lot of really cool armies that you can build, like Xeno armies or freaking cyborg armies, and that would just be awesomely freaking cool if you could be like, okay, we're at war with these people, send in the freaking Xenomorphs on their <laughs> ships, you know? Like, you you literally, you just launched freaking torpedo tube aliens at these ships, <laughs> they attach to the hull, burrow in, and now they gotta fight, you know, module to module. I think that would be yeah. amazing. And I know they've talked about doing, like, they're going to do more tech, they're going to do more weapons, and they're going to do, like, super weapons even. But, like, I would love to be able to just drop a bunch of, like, xenomorphs on a planet and just have them eat everyone. Absolutely, like, yeah. Or, like, yeah. robots that can you can self-destruct afterwards, so you can just purge a planet of things, basically, <laughs> and then, like, move in afterwards. That would be amazing. Um, my, uh, my final thing is, I was going to do a longer video on this, but I got sick and lazy. Um... There needs to be some balance done with the with the different FTL methods, I think. I think, in short, warp drive is always better. Hyper lanes relies too much on luck, because you could be really fucking good or it could be really fucking bad for you. Right. And wormhole generation is really amazing to begin with and gets worse as it goes on. Like does and, and hyper and warp drives only get better. Like they're not super great to begin with, but they only get better as they go on. We'll see. Okay, to address that point, in my opinion, having the ability to play with eliminating the different types negates that point. Like, there's no need to balance it if you can say, hey, just don't have it. Does that make sense? Well, no, because, like, it, I, I like that you can have multiple types on the same map. Like, that's right. a really cool right. idea, and you should, you should, and it should be balanced, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, otherwise, that idea is moot and it's a really good idea and so the, like, I think it's worth the effort to make it better. Hell, add a couple more as well. I don't know what you, they would be but I mean I've played games where like I started as hyper lane space and like I basically can only be as big as that little figure cartel next to you right. because my hyper lanes are just fucked unless right. I go to war with someone who's like equal strength with me like in the first 10 years of the game or whatever, right? right? And that's, I mean... And then I've played games where I get, like, as big as I am now, 
because my hyperlanes were amazing and I like the I like the idea of hyperlanes. I think that's cool. I just think there's it's just there's too much that relies. They need to like change their algorithm so that starting starting hyperlanes are nicer to you or give you the option of like we can make short jumps without hyperlanes, but they just take a long time or cost resources. How about this? Right. Like I what I would like honestly would be the ability to research a different type of FTO. So like you can of uh, late game tech there's two different kinds that everyone can research and they essentially like sort of combine all of the types together right um so eventually everyone essentially switches over to the um what are they called jump drives or side drives or something like that i don't right, remember right right side drives um, it's it, it's like very late game tech though and it, well, but i do agree i think it'd be cool if you could be like okay we're going to refit our ships and not be hyperlanes anymore or whatever. Well, see, that's the thing is like you can like as it stands right now, there's the mechanic of researching after the fights. Right. And you can learn some of their tech from the debris. An aspect of that would be you've got to destroy somebody who has a different FTO method. And then that gets you a foothold into that type of tech. And you maybe make it super expensive for the like if it's a non like if you didn't choose that FTO method make it super expensive to do it so you can't put it on all of your ships but it gives you the ability to put it on some of your ships that would also be cool too you could have like this is my warp drive ship and it's like my big you know bombardment fleet basically that I don't need to worry about moving fast exactly. I can just and like then you have things like you know the hyperlane fleet that's for protecting your bo inside your borders but not right. for going outside your borders right I mean yeah that right. would be cool or too or your freaking your your trader vessels that are freaking hyperlane trader vessels because they just they literally are stopping in each one little little backwater freaking places and right. selling their goods you know like i think that would be awesome. there's there's a lot of things they can do with it and i think having the multiple types is a great idea and i and they should do everything they can to keep it but just make sure it's balanced and fun and things like that um i'm sure someone's going to disagree with me and but I looked at the math and I looked at everything and I played all three of them multiple times and warp drives is just I, I think by mid game becomes better than the other ones. I mean that's just my opinion. But well, you looked at the math, so must be true. <laughs> <laughs> well like so so I didn't know this the first time I was playing I was playing wormhole generators, but the bigger your fleet is the longer it takes to generate the wormhole for it. Right. And also, you can't jump multiple fleets out of the same system without having multiple wormhole generators, right? Mm -hmm. So late game, it actually gets kind of worse because you have to keep your fleets split up in order to move them quickly, but then you have to build more stations in order to move multiple fleets out of the same place. Right. And all of those stations cost upkeep, which is really cheap, but like once you've got 20 to 25 of them spread out around your galaxy, like it, it does start to take a little bit of a toll, right? And you're, right. you're... now they're fast. They, they can like skip tons of space. Um, you know, they um, have amazing range and things like that, but I just don't think it's better than warp drives at, at that point. Right. The only thing with warp drives is the the cooldown time when you like you know you warp into a new state place and it's like warp cooldown or whatever uh -huh. is based on how far you jumped. So if you play smart and make a bunch of little short jumps, it could actually take you less time than making like one big jump. Um, right. And there's no limit to like how big the fleet is and stuff. I don't think. I mean, could be wrong. Someone else out there probably knows more than me, but they're probably. <laughs> not watching our channel <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay for me to bullshit well I know that like the larger your fleet in movement the more it costs yeah you like your energy consumption and your freaking minerals like just having them out and about and not in orbit can wreck yeah, you that, you know like yeah, if, you, if that's you're not just, careful that's just upkeep which I, I like I like that you can like bank things you know I like the system of minerals and stuff so that like I oftentimes am okay with my fleets like putting me in the negative when I move them out right right I just make sure I'm banked I'm good to go to war for X amount of time I can yep. have my fleets out there doing stuff that's a great 
mechanic. I agree. I agree. Cool. So yeah, I think um overall, doggone, doggone Stellar is a pretty damn good game, man. I really enjoy it, it, and I look. Going yeah. forward, what are, we, what are we looking at? We're looking at playing after major patches. Um, yeah, I think I think that'd be like um, you were gonna do some mod stuff. If there's a if there's a mod that comes out that's really fun, like for multiplayer, like we could play a game like that. Um, that'd be fun. Hearts of Iron Four comes out in a couple days, and so I'm gonna switch to that for a while. But, uh, dude, I can't help myself. <laughs> well, I, I already, well, I, I already pre-ordered, man. It's done. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're one of those pre-order guys. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Arma Three, King of the Hill just came out the 1944 mod. So maybe you play like the grand strategy aspect, and I'll do some FPS. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Boots, boots on the ground, you know. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do going forward. There's a oxen freeze kind of peaking my interest at the moment. So I might do like a three shot of that, three ten minute episode, something, something short, something sweet. We'll come back to Stellaris though, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Because Too much there, fun. There will be. Yeah. I mean, even without patches and without more content, I would still play this game. <laughs> well, there's just, like, I haven't, there's so much, like, I literally have played for, I don't know, 70, 80 hours, and I'm just now learning the genetic aspect of it. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, there's, it's a deep game, and it's very fun and engaging for as deep as it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's for true, son. For Good true. job, Paradox. Props. We, you... You've kept an old fan, and you've made a new fan, and that's the best you can hope for, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, like, this is a breakout. I literally think this is a breakout freaking IP for Paradox. And I think they did a great job with it. Congrats. Congrats. Well done. I really enjoyed your game. Thanks, guys. Seriously. <laughs> Alright, that's, that's tested poorly's look at Stellaris. Yeah, we'll see so you guys next time. Long, it was a long look, too. I had a lot of shit to say, man. I know, dude. It's fucking good shit, though. Holy shit. It's so fun. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, fun. Full, I'm full of good shit. <laughs> Just the shit part. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had my morning constitutional. I'm good. <laughs> is that what that is? I thought it meant prayer. <laughs> no, it means to take a shit. I did not know <laughs> that. Well, I learned something new today. It's good for your constitution, right? It's. It, <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> so, like, whenever you put points into constitution, that does that mean you can hold your dump longer? Yeah, like <laughs> wizard sh wizard shit all the time because they don't. Have... <laughs> they have no constitution. It's just a constant stream of diarrhea. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe we fucking is devolved into this. Seriously. Uh... <laughs> Awesome. All right. Yeah, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> or else this freaking lack of constitution is going to continue to spew out of my mouth. <laughs> um, uh, we'll, we'll put this out in multiple parts because it is a very long freaking look back. Uh, thank you for watching this long if you did. And if you didn't, well, I can say anything about your mom <laughs> if you're not listening. <laughs> Tell her to call me. Holla at me. Awesome. <laughs> Later, so catch dudes. Y'all next time.